So we welcome this bill as well as an attempt to address a growing problem, the use of bogus self-employment contracts and definitions that will stop workers from accessing rights um, and legislations that are supposed to be there to protect workers. Um, this bill seeks to stop the use of anti-competitive laws against workers who are essentially classified as being self-employed. I'm not sure what in fact it will do to deal with the wider and growing issues that lie at the heart of, uh, of why workers are in this situation, and that is the use by employers of bogus self-employment contracts. So, for example, it constantly comes up at um, the committee of jobs that I'm on, uh, where we use companies like Deliveroo and Uber to show that there is a growing and spreading phenomenon in this country that insists that workers sign a contract explicitly saying that they are not workers, but they are a business selling a service uh, to the employer. The result for the owners of the companies or the entrepreneurs that came up with this whiz kid idea is that you don't have to pay the minimum wage rates, you're not responsible for your workers' health, for their safety, for sick pay, and indeed, God forbid, that they might be entitled to a pension. Um, but this isn't a new phenomenon, but it is, in, in fact, um, something that has been around for a long, long time, probably as old as the system of capitalism itself. It's not the result of some shiny new uh, high-tech economy, but it's an attempt to individualise workers, to atomise them, to stop them coming together as a collective and stop them organising uh, in a trade union. Uh, I think this attempt will ultimately fail. And I think that workers will organise, whether they're in Deliveroo or any other company that attempts to classify them not as workers, but as somehow individual uh, self-employed um, service deliverers. They will come together as collectives and no amount of jargon or legal interpretation or anti-competition laws will stop that happening. But what this dial should be doing, and what it won't do, as long as it's dominated by both Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil, is to legislate, to make it illegal to classify workers as self-employed for the purpose of stopping them organising and forming uh, trade unions. And so therefore we need to make the attempts of companies like Deliveroo and Uber illegal and to allow workers the right to organise and to have access to their union in their workplace even if that is, uh, as, as, as Deliveroo uh, oper operatives do, is, is hang around street corners waiting for information on an app. But that's something that Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael both combine to stop us achieving in here. And they always use the excuse that it's bad for FDI, bad for foreign direct investment. Um, but of course, because of the growth of self bogus self-employment contracts, we are seeing something that is really just the tip of the iceberg because the iceberg is about much more than just self-employed contracts. It's about low pay, it's about flexi contracts, it's about contracts that are if and when, it's about non-union employment, it's about all the sort of uh, attacks on the traditional values of working class people from both the good and great in some areas of academia and some newspaper columnists who think that the very idea of a secure, permanent, pensionable, well-paid job is something of the history books and has no place in the brave new world. Has no place in a brave new world where foreign direct investment and low tax economy and uh, no tax are treated as sacred cows. So while we support this bill, it is really only an answer to a bigger question. How do we reverse the onslaught on workers' rights over the last decade or more? The first step will be to encourage workers themselves to take action by joining a union and stand and fighting for themselves. And I think we saw that magnificently in the recent Tesco strike. But it's also why the battle in Bus Aaron is hugely important. This is an attempt orchestrated by the government by the Department of Transport, by the National Roads Authority, to make a secure, pensionable, permanent job in transport a thing of the past. It's a manufactured crisis that could have been dealt with by the intervention of the Minister and of the, uh, of the Department of Transport. But it is going to be a litmus test for the workers' movement. Bus Aaron workers can't do it alone. 
They need and they deserve the support of their colleagues in the rest of the transport industry, both in Dublin Bus and in Irish Rail, and indeed in the wider labour movement, and I would argue in the wider community. Just as we all came out to support the Tesco workers, we need to come out to support the bus errand workers, and particularly where our communities are being cut for example, the, uh, the service from Athlone to Westport or the service from Derry to Dublin. Communities are going to suffer and they need to get on side with the workers to insist that their rights are protected. So if we can stop the spread of bogus self-employment by leading a fight to preserve every decent job that has decent pay and decent conditions, then we'll be going a long way towards doing what this House is failing to do for, for workers throughout the country. We need to proclaim here, however, as, as elected representatives, that this state is not a neutral player in a fight between uh, very vicious uh, employers, competitively vicious employers, and workers who are at the whim of their definition of what they are or what they aren't. And the state needs to put itself on side for workers' rights, because this is not a level playing field. It is not a, a, a place where two actors have equal parts. It is, in fact, a class war and one that our side will have to wake up to to see victory for. Just like Tesco workers got together and fought alongside communities, alongside other trades unionists, we will have to do the same for Bus Aaron or for anybody else whose secure pensionable jobs are under threat or whose hours are being forced into low if and when flexi contracts. The passing of this bill. The introduction of this bill and the passing of this bill is playing its part in that war, but ultimately it will be workers themselves, as it has always been, who, when they get organised and fight back, will make the big difference. We in this House can echo that, can be a voice for them, but we do need solidarity to come back on the agenda to make sure that people's rights are not trampled on. I welcome the bill and uh, commend the, uh, whoever has put it.